So let's say you're planning on robbing a bank. How are you going to do it? They're like, stay with me here. Like, let's think about this. You want to rob a bank. So you're going to need a plan. First thing you want is a way in. So this could be some door that's not secure, or maybe the security guards aren't looking somewhere. You find your way in. Then you need a plan to do what, to how to rob the bank once you're in there, right? So that you need to know where the money is, where the guards are going to be, and all that good stuff. But now once you've got your plan, you need to actually break into the bank, steal the money, and get out without getting caught. Sounds easy enough. Now let's say you want to rob a lot of banks. Well, the problem here is that the work you did for the first bank doesn't scale to the next one. You need a new plan for every new bank you want to rob. But what if you want to rob a computer? This is interesting. So to begin robbing a computer, we call it hacking a computer, it's kind of the same principle as the bank. The first thing you're going to need is a way in. Now in hacking, we call this way in a vulnerability. So once you've got your vulnerability in the computer, you can break into the computer and steal your information. Now the key thing about vulnerabilities is that they don't, don't affect just one computer, but a product, right? So let's say I've got a vulnerability in a phone. This vulnerability doesn't get me into just your phone, but it gets me into everyone who bought the same phone. And so now from my, my mom's basement, I can hack all your phones just from the over the internet, right? And so this is why computer security is such a different problem than physical security. We have to think about it a little differently. Now, when you're building a bank, you, know, you, you want to identify how thick the doors are going to be, how many bricks you're going to use. But really, what you care about is how secure is the bank. That's the end metric. Same thing for computers. Customers don't care about how secure their software is. They want a secure computer. And so here at MIT, we're doing exactly that. We're going to build a better computer. So how are we going to build a better computer? Well, we're going to start by understanding how today's computers just aren't making it. Why they aren't today's computers good enough? So we're going to look back in the past and at today's present computers, understand why they're not good enough, and look forward to the next 10 years of product design to see how we can design better computers for the next 10 years. And so I love this quote by Sun Tzu. So in The Art of War, Sun Tzu writes, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. Now what this says to me is that if we're going to beat our enemies, again, our enemies are these cyber criminals, these hackers, we got to think like them, get inside their heads, and as researchers, we need to beat them at their own game. So we're going to think like attackers. You want to hack into a computer. How do you even begin? Well, a computer is made up of two parts. The first is software. Now, we're all familiar with software. I think we can all kind of agree that software, you know, it leaves a little to be desired, right? Like, raise your hand if you've ever had your computer freeze or crash when you really needed it to just not do that, right? Pretty much everyone in here. And so anytime you've got a crash or a freeze, these can actually be bugs that hackers can use to get in. These could be vulnerabilities. But computer software runs on computer hardware. It runs on computer chips. Now, a lot of people forget that hardware is also made by humans, which means your hardware can also have vulnerabilities. Now, remember, we're thinking like attackers here. So this should get your attacker mind spinning, right? The hardware itself can have a vulnerability. If my chip has a vulnerability, that vulnerability will live for the lifetime of the product. You can't run around adding transistors to a product you've already shipped. It's out there. It's in the consumer's hands. And so if I can find a way to break into the hardware, or even better, into the hardware from the software, so from both of these worlds coming together, my bug, my vulnerability, will never go away for the whole life of the product, which means I can hack computers all day long. So as an attacker, that's what I want to do. And in fact, we think these kinds of bugs are so important that we came up with a special word for them. We call these synergistic threats. So at MIT, we spent a lot of time thinking about these synergistic threats and how you might mitigate them and design around them. I'll give you an example here. You actually might be familiar with this. Uh, two years ago, I published a vulnerability that I found in the Apple M1 chip with my group called the Pac-Man attack. Now, this attack was actually a synergistic threat we discovered in the real Apple M1 CPU. It's a real vulnerability. And what this shows us is that these synergistic threats are real. And they're also very important to study. Like I said, we want to design products. We want to design computers for the next 10 years that are secure and better than what we have today. And if we're going to do that, we've got to understand how today's computers fail. So my name is Joseph Ravi Chandran. I'm a second year PhD student here. And my whole job is to work on these synergistic threats. So I take a product and see if I can find a way to break it. That means I spend a lot of my day carefully manipulating the microarchitectural structures within the CPU to do exactly what I want. But I'm not the only one who works on this. In fact, we have a whole team 
I call it one of everybody. We have one of every kind of hacker in the same room working on this problem together, trying to solve this problem of how can we make better computers. And so the head of our team is our fearless leader, Mengja. Now, Mengja's vision and direction are what guide all of us in everything that we do here. Next, we have my lab mate, Yuheng. Yuheng works on what's called formal verification. What that means is that Yuheng uses mathematical proofs to formally prove that the guarantees we make about security are just that. They're guarantees. Next, we have Meng Wan. Meng Wan is our resident cloud computing expert. So Meng Wan's job is to make sure that when you run your business products on a cloud computing infrastructure, you're not getting hacked. You're not getting your information leaked by someone else. Maybe me. I don't know. Can't prove anything. Next, we have Shixin. Shixin works on CPU defense. So what she does is builds into the CPU silicon itself defensive measures that make it really hard for attackers like me to get in. Next, we've got Peter. So Peter's whole job is quantitative analysis of leakage. What that means is that Peter is able to take two attacks and tell you exactly numerically how much worse one is than the other. So we have this way to compare attacks. It's a very useful metric. And lastly, we have Joule. So Joule's job is trusted execution environments. What that means is special little regions of your computer where you can run security critical software in a safe manner. And so that's, that's a brief look at our team. And again, we have got pretty much one of everybody. And uh, it's, it's a really great team. We're working very hard on this problem. So I want to close with this thought again from Sun Tzu. Uh, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. Now at MIT, we put this idea into practice every single day while we work to, to think like attackers to design the next generation of secure computers. And if you share this vision, you think this is a really cool idea too, I'd love to hear about it. So feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or shoot me an email. Thank you very much.